Good evening, it's Charlie Z02 CTM. Um, just back off that uh, that last business trip, and I'm at home for a, a grand total of three days before going on holiday. So um, I've decided to uh, quickly flash up uh, on the circuit board that classy amplifier that we looked at in the last video, and to do a few um, few initial experiments to see um, how it compares with uh, the LT Spice. So you recall from the last video. This was the, the classy amplifier that we had designed up using that design software um, using three uh, BS170s for the switching devices and then a, um, a combination of inductors and capacitors uh, on the output. <clears throat> this is an amplifier that I haven't used before so um, I have no knowledge of how this use is used and I've been very much going by um, that design paper from, from Nathan um, Sakal here. Anyway, so what we have here is um, the actual amplifier built up. Um, I'm using strip board, and um, I'm very conscious that strip board, you do have problems with inter-track capacitance. So I've tried to minimise that as much as I possibly can by um, cutting the tracks with a uh, with a small drill piece um, all through here between. Uh, the gates and the uh, the drains there and wherever I can I've elected or well, I've tried to like I say break the um, those tracks up to reduce capacitance um, yeah uh, not ideal but I think for these sort of lower frequencies is not too bad but like I say to try to mitigate that issue there so the configuration uh, there goes to the three BS170s there uh, that's the RFC uh, that's 10 turns on an FT37-43 um, and then we have our um, our inductor here in the output circuit, which is 17 turns on an FT37-6, giving us roughly that 885 odd um, nano Henrys. One of the problems I do have here in the shack, which I need to rectify, is I, I need to purchase a um, a better LCR meter. Um, I unfortunately don't have one which works reliably down. Um, yeah, that sort of one um, micro Henry um, it was on those lower values so I do need to purchase something um, I've heard the X tech range um, has got quite a good LCR meter so that's something, something which I do need to purchase um, the this arrangement here is giving us uh, that seven odds uh, seven point seven eight five or thereabouts uh, load resistance um, and that's probably all that's worth mentioning and just hanging off what I should say there, we have um, the capacitor here that is in parallel with the the um, source to drain. Um, that's a value there. Uh, that's roughly 500 picofarads, and then I've got in parallel with that this variable capacitor here, which gives us roughly sort of 20 up to 300 puff uh, to to vary that value there. And then the series capacitor that runs from the drains through to the inductor. Uh, that's this variable capacitor here with another fixed value of uh, 560 picofarads uh, in parallel with that again so between the two of them I can do a bit of um, varying there to see what impact that has uh, on the waveform on the drain and then uh, how that um, relates to and impacts the voltage across our load resistor here so in terms of driving it, what I've elected to do is use a signal generator for a start. So the SIG gen set up to be on uh, 7.020 megahertz. Uh, it's 5 volts peak and on a square wave there. So I've elected to use this for a start just to, to see how the amplifier works um, and then look to move to the SI5351 uh, to drive it once I've sort of got an idea that this is actually working reasonably well. Um, sitting, we've got the uh, two uh, oscilloscope probes. We've got this one here, which is going to be our top trace on the scope. Uh, that is looking at or scoping the drain of those three uh, BS one seventies, and then the um, the second trace is uh, looking across the output of um, the load resistor. So just before flashing that up, just wanted to have a quick look at. Um, the LT Spice. So let me just sort of zoom out there. Hopefully we'll see something. So we can see there. That's the circuit um, that we have there on the board. 
Um, that perfect switch there is represented by the three BS 170s. Uh, there goes our RFC. I've put in there 35 micro Henrys, which is uh, the 10 turns on an FT37-43. Um, and then these values here are the set values that came out of that um, Class E design software from all this ton software dot um, or ton probably software dot com uh, the traces up here let me sort of just do a bit of a zoom up there hopefully that comes out we've got two traces there uh, apologies for holding the camera the the red trace there is the voltage on the drain um, you can see there that's the device off and then our ideal waveform when the device is on uh, should be nice and flat there and we'll just have a look at the uh, that design paper from Nathan and you can see um, the effect of inaccurate values of the capacitors and the inductors what impact that has on this waveform here and the green trace there is the output uh, across our load so the the um, output the green trace there we're looking at roughly uh, 12 volts down to minus 10 roughly so let's just sort of round that for our big round numbers to uh, 20 volts peak to peak and we can see here our red trace here is going from roughly 0 volts up to 40 odd volts so we'll see how that compares um, with the oscilloscope so what I'm going to do now we'll just sort of zoom up on uh, the scope there so what we'll do now just double check that I've covered everything. Um, I'll then just sort of key it up. So we're now keyed up, um, and we can start to see some of the impacts of varying. This one I'm varying now is that series capacitor that goes between the drains and the inductor. And then if I start to vary the the uh, parallel capacitor, so this is the capacitor that sits across the um, the drain to source and in line with what's suggested in this paper here um, if you look at the back of that paper it's going to unkey that so we don't cook those output transistors so again output resistors here it is here we can see here that um, sorry apologies for the uh, very poor camera work here but um, commensurate professional uh, you can see here that you get different output waveforms on that drain and then it gives you some guidance on what to do with the various capacitors so here it talks about, in this particular case here it's only talking about um, the parallel capacitor and the series capacitor so by varying those you can manipulate the waveform to get down to our ideal which is a nice um, peak when the device is off and then a nice flat while the device is hard on. So if we go back to keying that up we can start to see that, that effect there. So we can start to see on the bottom of the waveform. Now I'm no expert in this one, I've never played with these amplifiers before so um, trying to look at what I'm seeing here on the, uh, the scope versus the design paper trying to sort of correlate the two. But either way um, if, if my assumptions are correct then that should be should be about right there because it's nice and flat. Interesting enough, that doesn't represent the peak on the output. Um, but that aside, uh, it's certainly interesting sort of to sort of play around. So in terms of actual voltage levels here, um, both probes are sitting on times 10 to try and reduce the load on the circuit. So if we look at this top trace here, which is the voltage from the drain to the source, we've got roughly there. Um, two divisions that's currently set on two volts per division so 2 times 10 is 20 so we've got uh, 0, 20, 40 just over 40 volts so that align there that aligns quite nicely with what we're seeing let me just turn it off um, what we're seeing with the LT Spice in terms of the output here we've got on the bottom trace we've got approximately 1.7 so 1.7 divisions uh, times 10 um, is uh, 17, so 17 volts. So that, um, let me just double check that one. So 
So sorry about that. Just had to go and double check the LT spice that we're getting out there. So what we say there, we're getting out there roughly uh, 12 plus 10 equals 20, and we're getting in there 1.7. Um, roughly 17 volts. So let me just unkey that because I know I'm starting to heat up those those resistors there. So let me just zoom back out there. So by my calculations there, so 1.7 times 10 equals uh, 17. So 17 divided by 2. So 0.5 times and then 0.7071 times squared that by 7.7 or divided by 7.7 ohms gives us uh, 4.7 watts so at the moment we're producing um, around 4.7 watts um, on those outputs there so that's uh, so 4.7 that's and we des the design using the software is for 8 watts so close but um, it, it's it's certainly not the same as what we'd expect However, you know, I'm just I'm just playing around here. This is this is very much a learning um, exercise for me. So, um, you know, I, I do need to sort of have a look at the circuit and what potentially could do to sort of um, get the actual performance closer to the design slash uh, simulator performance. Now, I know for a fact that. I, I can't check the value of this inductor, unfortunately. Um, I don't have an accurate enough LCR meter here, so you know that could be an issue. Um, certainly our drive coming in. Um, the output of that field tech SIGGEN is certainly not the, you know, the best in the world, so um, our rise time could be slightly... Well, in fact, I do know the rise time is not a perfect square wave. Um, it's close, but it's certainly not spot on, so... That would certainly have some impact, I suspect, on the speed in which these devices here turn on in terms of slamming them on and off, which I understand is how you really want to treat these in a classy amplifier. So I think once I come back off leave, um, what I may look to do is play around with that logic circuit uh, that um, produces a nice output 5-volt um, square wave, and I'll look at driving the input uh, using that to see if I get any differences, and then look to do um, through Amazon or someone getting us getting a nice LCR meter and sort of uh, improving the shack here when it comes to being able to measure some of these uh, devices. So anyway, um, that's all I really wanted to do for this this particular video. It's just very much uh, just some initial experiments while I had the time. Uh, unfortunately, I won't have a chance to tomorrow night because I have to start breaking down the bike and putting it in the bike box and getting ready to travel. So. Um, I won't have any more chances, but I did. I was very keen to at least spend tonight soldering things up and just having a bit of initial play. So um, yeah, interesting. Um, like I say, it's a, it's a, an amplifier I have not used before, um, and really not a lot of um, parts counts here. But uh, yeah, seems to work quite well. Uh, interesting enough, I uh, was playing around with switching just on off the uh, the input to this amplifier here as a way of keying it because this will be eventually be a um, or it will be a, a Morse code transmitter and interesting while I was keying the input here I actually killed these I saw a spike in the current and they died so that's interesting I don't know if in the process of, of touching that I touched something I don't think I did um, but I don't know if anybody else has had experience in in switching on and off. Oh, you know, one could argue the square wave going in is switching it on and off. But why electrically disconnecting it, reconnecting it, um, cause these to fail? I, I don't know. Um, I'm a bit reluctant to do it again. Um, so I may have to look at the the original idea of of keying uh, VCC or keying the 12 volts coming in. Um, to to uh, to turn that transmitter on and off. Anyway, that was just uh, an interesting observation. Um, I'll say seventy uh, threes here. Um, any questions, please sing out, or any advice or suggestions, uh, they are more than welcome. Um, I certainly appreciate those. Um, like I say, this is uh, very much a uh, a learning uh, exercise for me with this particular amplifier, um, and if it sort of provides some some um, 
impetus or some, um, what's the word, for others to give it a go to, then that's fantastic. Anyway, like I say, 73s, I won't uh, labour the point, and um, we shall see you next time. Cheers all.